In this section, we're going to discuss geometric sequences and series. Let's jump right in. A geometric sequence, geometric sequence, is a sequence whose successive terms, that means one term after the other, differ by the same ratio, which we, we refer to as R, called the common ratio. So we're going to be using this term common ratio throughout the, uh, the entire discussion here. Again, and we refer to the common ratio as the value R. All right. Well, now that we have covered arithmetic sequences and we're moving into this new type of sequence called geometric sequences, we have two different types of sequences that we've discovered. And so we have to, when presented with a new sequence, we have to decide, is it arithmetic or is it geometric or is it neither? So we now have this extra level of complexity because we have to figure out what kind of sequence we're dealing with before we can move on and apply the correct formula. So the first step would be to, be to identify the type of sequence you're dealing with. In example one, it says determine whether the sequence could be arithmetic or geometric. So it could be either or it could be neither. All right. And then it says find the common difference. That would be if it's arithmetic. Find the common ratio if it is geometric. So if we analyze uh, this sequence for just a moment here, we can see that in order to go from 100 down to 93, and then from 93 down to 86, and then from 86 down to 79, you're changing by the same value every time. That value is negative 7. So since they're subtracting 7 every time, this one has a common difference, and therefore it's an arithmetic sequence. Again, arithmetic, which is the type of sequence we were dealing with in the last section. Um, and if we could keep going if we wanted to. We could say that the fifth term, a sub 5, would be just subtract 7 again. You get 72. And then the sixth term, subtract 7 again, which would be 65, and so on. We can just go on forever like this. All right? Um, and if we wanted to, we could use the formulas that we discussed in the previous section that the next term, or any term, a sub n, would be equal to, we could say the first term 100 minus n minus 1 times the common difference, I'm sorry, plus n minus 1 times the common difference negative 7, not negative 6. Um, and we could write the general term a sub n as 100 minus 7n plus 7, and so a sub n is simply negative 7n plus 107, all right? Um, and again, you just simplify this, distribute the negative 7, and simplify, you get to this term. So any term, if I wanted the 70th term now, I could just put 70 in for n, and I would find the 70th term, all right? That's not what this question asks. All they really wanted us to do was to tell what kind of sequence it was. And so we just recognize the pattern is minus seven every time, which means it has a common difference and it's arithmetic. All right, let's move on to the next one. So to determine whether the sequence is arithmetic or geometric, find the common difference or ratio and the next term. Um, in this one, if we study what's going on, it looks like they're subtracting 10 but then to go from 90 down to 60, they're subtracting 30. And then to go from 60 down to 15, they're subtracting 15. So clearly this cannot be arithmetic because it's not the same value that is being subtracted or added every time. So we can move on to geometric. And um, we haven't really discussed it here, but geometric means that they, they differ by the same ratio. That means if you were to divide the two, two successive terms, you'd get the same number every time. Another way to say that would be if you multiply by the same number every time, you're going to get to the next term. Um, so that begs the question, well, what would we multiply by to go from 180 to 90? And clearly, if you multiply 180 by a half, you get to 90. But if you do that again you would get 45, not 60. So the next term is multiplying. Actually, 60 would be taking 90 and multiplying by 2 thirds. 
because 60 is two-thirds of 90. And then um, 15 is actually one-fourth of 60. And so it, there's no clear pattern here. You're multiplying by a half, then you're multiplying by two-thirds, then you're multiplying by a fourth in order to get from, from one term to the next. And it, these, it almost looks like you're going one, two, one, two, one, two on the top, but we can't really tell that just by looking at this. And then the bottom is going two, three, four, maybe it's five, six, seven. But again, we would need a few more terms to determine exactly what this pattern is trying to say. And we have nothing. Therefore, um, because we don't have anything, we cannot find, cannot find the next term, which would be a sub 5. We don't have a pattern. We don't have a clear indication of what's happening. And so this is neither arithmetic or geometric. We cannot find a sub 5. All right? Every now and then, you'll run into a sequence where the pattern is not obvious. The pattern has to be specified, or you need more terms before you can determine it. Okay, let's move on. Example three says, determine whether the sequence could be arithmetic or geometric. Same, same directions here. And if we look at this one a little bit closer, you can see that in order to get from five to one, you would have to either subtract four, but if you look at the next one, you can't subtract four to get from one to point two. That's not possible. Um, but if you multiplied by a fifth, and then you multiplied by one fifth again, um, remember that point two is two over ten, two tenths, which is one fifth. And so point two is one times one fifth. And then there's actually an error here. There's an extra zero. Let me scratch that out. Sorry about that. Um, but if you multiply point two by one fifth again, you would get 0 0.04. So this one is multiplying by the same number every time. And if you are multiplying by the same number, then this is called a geometric sequence. That's the very definition of what a geometric sequence is. So this one is geometric, which means it has a common ratio. The ratio R is always found by taking two successive terms. So if I say I take a sub n, um, let's let a sub n be 0 0.04, and I divide by the previous term, which would be a sub n minus 1. Actually, let me do this in a red color here so it pops out a little bit better for us to memorize. If I divide by a previous term, then I would get my common ratio r. In fact, let's just make this easy. If I said a sub n was the second term, so a sub 2 is the value 1 here. And then a sub n minus 1 must be a sub 1. If this was a sub 2, then a sub 2 minus 1 is a sub 1. Um, and I divide by 5, 1 fifth, the common ratio. Divide 0 0.04 by 0 0.2, you'll get 1 fifth. Divide 0 0.2 by 1, you'll get 1 fifth. All right, so our common ratio in this problem is 1 fifth the whole time. All right, um, and that means if I wanted to find the next term, I have the first four terms, one, two, three, four. So if I wanted the fifth term, I would just have to take the previous term, 0 0.04, and multiply by my common ratio, which is one fifth. And that gives me 0 0.008. Just for the record, again, one fifth is the same as 0.2. So I could have just as easily said 0 0.04 times 0.2 is 0 0.008. Either way, you can use fraction form for your common ratio, or you can use decimal form. All right? Um, and they were that was asked for. They did want the fifth term in each of these. We couldn't find it in example two. We found it in example one. The fifth term was 72. All right, um, so, so far, we have, uh, we've, just through these three examples, we've analyzed uh, kind of an idea on how do we determine what kind of sequence we're dealing with. What did they give us? In the first one, we had arithmetic. In the second one, we couldn't tell. There was neither. 
It definitely was not arithmetic or geometric. And the third one was clearly a geometric sequence. We we're multiplying by the same value. And then, so that's a summary of what we've done. And then also we have, re, we have given out a formula for how to find R. If we have two consecutive terms from a geometric sequence, we can simply divide the latter term by the previous term to get our common ratio. All right? Um, and then also we reviewed up here what, what we could what formula and how we could find the general term of a of arithmetic sequence. But that was that was old material. That was from last section. All right. So let's talk about general rules here. Then general rules for geometric sequences. These are the rules you want to memorize, the rules that are going to help you through the lessons. All right. First of all, any term, any general term of an arithmetic sequence can be identified can be expressed in this way, where the nth term, if we want the 17th term, then n is 17, um, the nth term can be found by taking the first term and multiplying by the common ratio um, one less time than, than the term you're looking for. So if I wanted the 17th term, I would multiply by the common ratio 16 times. All right. So it's the first term times the common ratio 16 times, which makes sense Right? If I have the first term and I knew I wanted the 17th, then I would have to take that first term and multiply by the common ratio 16 times to get to, to step over 16 times to get to the 17th term. All right? Like we did with the arithmetic sequences, I prefer to take this formula and express it using more generic variables. So what if I didn't have the first term? That's the key thing. What if I don't have a sub 1? What if I just had any previous term? We'll call that, again, like we did with the uh, arithmetic sequences, we'll call that previous term k, a sub k. Again, this is any term before a sub n. All right? So if I had any previous term, then I would multiply by the common ratio raised to the n minus k power instead of n minus 1. If I have the first term, it's always going to be n minus 1. But if I have, say, the, the sixth term and I wanted the 17th, then I would do 17 minus 6, not 17 minus 1, because I'd be using the sixth term here. All right? Again, a, a sub 1 is the first term, r is the common ratio. So let's play around with this. Example three, find the seventh term of the geometric sequence. We want a sub seven, all right? That's what this question is asking for, a sub seven. They've told us that it is geometric, which means to find r, all we have to do is divide two of the terms. I'll say divide a sub n by a sub n minus 1. So we'll just take the first two terms, 12 being the second term, and 3 is the first term. And you divide those, and you get a common ratio of 4. Now, of course, it doesn't have to just be those two. I could take any two consecutive terms. I could have I used 48 and 12. All right? The latter term goes on top. The earlier term goes on bottom. I could have used... 192 and 48. No matter what, if you check all three of these ratios, 12 divided by 3, 48 divided by 12, 192 divided by 48, you're going to get 4 every time, which means we have verified it is definitely a geometric sequence, definitely geometric, and the common ratio has to be 4. All right, well, if that's the case, we have the fourth term, right? We have the fourth term is 192. So if I wanted to complete the sequence just to go up to the seventh term, all I have, would have to do is take that 192 and multiply by 4, right? Sorry, um, this is the fourth term. If I multiplied by 4, I would get the fifth term, 768. That's a sub 5. So then if I multiplied by 4 again, why am I multiplying by 4? Because 4 is the common ratio. If I multiply by 4 again, I get 3,072. That's the sixth term. And if I multiply by 4 again, I get 1,000, I'm sorry, 12,288. 
and that would be the seventh term. That's what they wanted. A sub 7 is 12,288. All right? That was easy enough because I had fourth term. I had the common ratio. I just had to step one, two, three times. I had to multiply by four three times to get up to the seventh term. But what if they had asked for the 17th term? Would you just multiply by four again and again and again, 10 more times, right? That could get a little tricky. That could get really annoyingly um, tedious. So rather than depend on uh, this rigorous way of just continuing to multiply by the same value, we want to be able to use a formula, like one of these formulas. So if I go to the formula, a sub 7, the seventh term, is equal to, well, I have the first term. If I have the first term, I'm going to use the first term. It's easy that way. So I'm just going to go a sub 1 times 4 to the 7 minus 1. Right? And of course, a sub 1 was 3. So 3 times 4 to the 6th power. And if you do that, you will get 12,288, the seventh term. All right? So we've shown it, you know, in this rigorous way where we just complete the sequence and we showed it using the formula, this formula above. Don't forget about this formula because we are going to be using this more generic formula um, in, the, in one of the next examples. I'm going to stop the video here and the rest of these notes will be in the next video.